Hey everyone, today we're going to be speed running through a bunch of strange or just very specific tier lists that you've all suggested. The type of lists that are probably put in the comments as jokes, at least some of them. Others just have very niche subjects. Again, some of these just feel a bit too specific for a full video dedicated to them. Let's get into it. Okay, so starting off with a killer's left hands ranked list. <laughs> For this one, I don't even know. This one had to be a joke, surely. If anything, I think the better list would have been right hands ranked, as weird as that sounds, because that's the hand that grips the primary weapon for most killers. But hey. So, tears. Average hands, good hands, great hands, and amazing hands. <laughs> For our average hands, we have basically all the characters who just have fairly normal hands. Maybe some of them are bloody or scratched or something, but generally these are all just hands that in some form are just a regular human hand with no cosmetic additions. So, in this tier, we've got Trapper, Wraith, Hillbilly, Huntress, Bubba, Freddy, Pig, Deathsinger, Twins, Trickster, and Myers. I'm not gonna rank them directly, they're all far too similar, I feel. On to good hands, we're gonna start with Executioner, whose left hand is a little different with a white glove covering it. Ghostface is gonna follow him up with his black leathery gloves. Clown then has fingerless gloves that look all tattered and such. Legion tops them, however, with their bloody hand wraps. Nemesis has rubbery wraps around his own hands. His are just a little more interesting, being bigger and meatier than a regular human's. Cenobite wins out of the gloves though, I think, with his half and half gloves, with skin and glove. Wow. Spirit has a much more normal looking hand, but it's more her twitchy animations that bump her up into this tier. We then have Hag and her more claw-like hands, that generally just look creepier and more fitting for a horror character. Then we have Doctor who has some cool animations on his left hand as electricity sparks through it. For great hands, we're gonna start off with Oni. This hand is big and scary with its blue tint, claws, and part armoured section. Then we have Plague with her cool intricate claw finger plating things with these jewels in each of the fingers. Demogorgon's left hand, or left claw really, is just a big distorted otherworldly claw, and it looks pretty cool. Finally we have Blight and his six fingers. Yeah. Finally, amazing hands. Nurse has the best left hand in the game, as her left hand has a bunch of cool, different animations and effects. It does this whole burn up thing when it's charged for a blink, which looks pretty cool. On par, or maybe slightly better though, is the artist's left hand. It's got this inky texture and looks super cool as it swells about. It's got this weird skeletal structure too, and overall, it's very creepy and very cool. Okay, done, moving on. Ranking all shacks is another suggestion I've had. This one I think is a cool idea, but again, it's just far too narrow, I guess, of a subject. I don't have quite enough to say to make it into a standalone video. But yeah, I do actually think this is a kinda cool list. About half the maps currently don't have a unique shack, as a lot of them are indoor, and then both Backwater Swamp and Red Forest haven't got any visual updates yet, so they just have the old shack. Alright, so three tiers, average shacks, good shacks, and great shacks. Average shacks are going to start us off. The original shack is first up. This is the one that remains still on Backwater Swamp and Red Forest. It's got the original look to it, and and I believe the only difference between the two realms is that near the main door, Swamp has a little light and Red Forest has a torch. I think that's the extent of the difference. Otherwise, it takes on the fairly standard wooden thrown together look, with bits of corrugated metal and cloth holding it together. Still, not bad and pretty creepy looking. We then have the Macmillan Estate Shack, the Autohaven Wreckers Shack, and the Coldwind Farm Shack. These three shacks, I believe, all have the same external structure. It just looks a little different due to them having different shading or lighting with the different realms. Again, I believe the only external difference to be the variation of lights above the main doorway, or front doorway, so the only true difference between these shacks is the interiors. Macmillan Estates has some crates and stuff, Autohaven some tools and paint, and Coldwind some hay and a wheelbarrow. I think my favourite out of these is Autohaven, then Coldwind, and then Macmillan Estate. Following this up, we have the good shacks. These ones next up, in all fairness, do have the same outer structure also as the three original realm shacks. But both Crotus Pren Asylum Shack and Ormond Shack look slightly better to me, and a bit more unique. Crotus Pren has this burnt or charred effect to the exterior, and Ormond's looks much paler and more weathered by the snow. That may just be the lighting though. Inside, these are more interesting too I feel, with Ormond's having icicles and snow covering the floor, and Crotus Pren having a charred interior with Asylum stuff laying around. I guess it's the extra layer of detail of the snow and icicles and burnt wood that does it for me. I think Ormond is my favourite of the two. On to our final tier of great shacks. To start us off here we have the Springwood Shack. This one takes on a broken brick structure with pipes and vines running around the sides. It's nice that this just has a different appearance
difference, honestly. The interior is filled with other stuff found around the map, like more pipes, chains, and crates. The shack is different looking and fits in well with the surrounding environment. Grave of Glenvale Shack is up next, and the first shack I believe that was given a unique look, like chronologically, release-wise. <laughs> this shack is wooden but has quite a different exterior design. It's much taller and is entirely wooden it seems. Inside we have lots of markings across the walls, an animal skull, and then these bags hanging from the ceiling, dripping with blood. There's also lit candles and a bunch of bones lying around. Also, it's got a unique layout with a breakable wall next to the main entrance. Very cool, very unique. Next up we have the Yamaoka Estate Shack. This shack fits in so well with the surrounding area, keeping in line with the Yamaoka Estate's Japanese theme. It looks very similar in fact to the family residence's main structure, just on a much smaller scale. I love the colours of this one and its kind of overgrown state. Inside there's also loads of these warm coloured and cool looking lanterns hanging from the ceiling. Finally we have the Forsaken Boneyard Shack. This shack is cool looking and is, I think, meant to be a crypt, or at least resemble that kind of structure. It's got these awesome big stone bricks, which look all ancient and weathered. The windows are also arches, which is a nice variation. Inside we have cobwebs everywhere, a grave in the corner, and a cool ceiling with a nice little pattern on it. I absolutely love this shack design. Yeah. Moving on. Survivor Hook Screams Ranked. This one is a really weird one to rank. Even for a video game, it just seems so weird to say, I'm going to rank Hook Screams. Like, that sounds so horrible. I'm sorry, that list just feels too strange and uncomfortable to rank. What we can rank though, and what was also requested, is Killer Stun Sounds Ranked. You know, monsters and killers getting bonked by a pallet doesn't seem so bad. So, here's my order. Starting off with the standard oofs that many of the killers have, in last place we have Cenobite, who barely even makes a sound. I think he's pretending to be injured to make the entity happy here, to be honest. Same goes for Nemesis, who just raises his hands like, Oh no, ah, you got me. Then we have Freddy, who has this weird, distorted dream world groan. Executioner does kind of a low groan, but again we can assume these stronger characters may be putting it on a bit. Hillbilly does a little growl. Trapper seems more confused than his, I guess. Hag also just does a little growl. Artist does a little gasp, which kind of sounds like a crow call, which is quite interesting. Ghostface does a gasp more than anything else. He sounds quite shocked by it. <laughs> Nurse's sounds pretty similar to her regular fatigue she gets after using a blink. <laughs> Oni's one just makes him sound incredibly angry, even more so than usual. The two Legion member voices both sound fairly stunned by the palette, which makes sense as the action is a palette stun. <laughs> Bubba does a similar sound to when he chainsaw sweeps into a wall or something, or collides with an object and enters his tantrum mode. <laughs> Wraith 1 is like a full on rage and is probably the most animated we see him in the whole game, compared to his usual quiet and stealthy state. <laughs> Twins just seem pretty sick of it, kinda done with everybody throwing pallets on them. <laughs> Spirit just goes full blown screaming in rage, a bit like Wraith. <laughs> Demogorgons is this ear-piercing shriek that makes it seem all the more alien and otherworldly. Blight's one has him groan and then just a follow-up sound, which is like, bro, seriously? That was uncalled for. Deathsingers is just kinda terrifying. He groans and gets a bit annoyed, and then it ramps up and it sounds really menacing. Myers does a little oof sound. Oh. Trickster's one you can get a bunch of different lines for, all of which he speaks in Korean. Yep, that's just a cool element that most of the other characters don't really have. Voice lines in these small parts of the game like stun animations. Hi. Doctor's one, I'm not quite sure exactly how to describe this, but it just sounds like he's had an ice cube placed on his neck or something. <laughs> Next up we have Plague, who just makes a regular stun sound, but then follows it up with a little chant. I just thought this one was a bit more character fitting than a lot of the others. She also sounds really annoyed more than angry, a bit betrayed maybe even. 
Clown's one is just a bit different, and he kind of just has this extended laugh upon the palate dropping, followed by even more laughs, each one sounding less healthy as he goes on. <laughs> Huntress's stun is very character fitting with her going into a fit of childlike rage upon getting hit by a pallet. <laughs> Next up, Killer Power Icons Ranked. This one I actually like the idea of too, again it's just far too small of a list, there's just not enough to say or show for it to fill a whole video. I like most of these power icons honestly, but I'm gonna get nitpicky for the sake of being interesting. So, 3 tiers, average icons, cool icons, and finally really cool icons. Starting off with average icons. Starting off we have the characters who just have their faces as their power image. Ghostface, Twins, Oni and Shape all have this. I don't mind it and it kinda makes sense I suppose, but I just wish they were a bit more interesting than just a literal portrait of the characters. I don't hate them, I just wish they weren't a character headshot essentially. Spirits is just a hand, yeah, I don't know, I feel this could have been a cool Yamaoka crest, or just something a bit more ghostly. Huntresses is just a hatchet, Trappers is just his bear trap, and Hillbilly his chainsaw. I get why these are the images, and they do sum up the powers I suppose, but they're still kinda boring and a bit too straightforward. We then have Pig, Bubba, and Clown. A reverse bear trap, another chainsaw, sweeping this time, and finally Clown's afterpiece tonic. Again, all just images of their equipment basically. These have a little more detail and movement lines which is cool though. Race 1 is kinda cool too, focusing on the bell for the image, the emptiness of the skull's eye sockets, and the surrounding space works quite well in conveying race character. And the image itself of the wailing bell is quite simple and cool too. Nemesis is one is just his fist surrounded by the tentacle. It does the job and shows off the brutality of Nemesis, I suppose, and also the infection element with the tentacle. In a way, I feel it looks too elegant almost. I feel it needs to be sharper and harsher, more in character. Blights is next and is just his serum vial, but with some smoke, or the fog maybe, around it too, making it look a little more mysterious. Okay, on to the cool icons. Cenobite just has his chains coming out of a portal. I do like the way they're kind of laid out I suppose. Also the visuals of the portals are always just really cool looking, which ups it a bit here for sure. Trickster has a similar thing to some of the others, of it just being an image of a weapon, but his is a little cooler I feel due to the line surrounding it and it looking like it's mid throw. It's also at a slight angle to help out with that movement. Slinger has this similar effect, with his spear firing in his power logo. I prefer this one a bit more, and I like how it's twisting, and also showing off the brutal spearhead, giving you an idea of the kind of character the Deathslinger is. Similar to Slinger we have Artist's icon, which has her crow in mid-flight. It too has a similar spiral shape and depicts the wispy and inky features of the artist well, whilst also literally depicting the crow, which is her power too. Continuing on we have Hag. Granted this one is a triangle in a circle, this could be argued to be the lowest. I feel the simplicity kinda works for this one, with the triangle shape representing hexes as a whole mechanic within DBD, and so a pretty fitting image for the character who brought them into the game with her power. Demogorgon also has a similar shape based one. I like this because it feels a bit more conceptual and generally spookier with its imagery, although it's basically just an image of a tunnel, but I like the way it's got these layers and the twisty effect it also has. Doctor's one is also very straightforward. I just personally find the chaotic electricity to be a cool image, and generally fitting to represent Doctor's power. Even if it's simple, it represents his character, as well as literally representing his power too. Okay, moving on to really cool icons. Plague is going to start us off here, with her interesting power logo. I'm not entirely sure what this is even meant to be, but I think it looks cool and is a good image to represent her power, looking intricate whilst also plaguey. Nightmares 1, although being somewhat of a portrait, incorporates other elements too. This image is Freddy peeking through a wall, or a dream portal or something, with his claw overhanging, you can only see part of him as he peeks out, his creepy face hidden behind his brutal claw. I think this works really well for Freddy. Nurses 1 is quite similar to some of the others that we've seen, but I just really like it. I like that her hand is the main focus, surrounded by possibly the fog, and also what looks to be falling ash. I think this represents her really well. Executioners is another very simple one, but one which really gets across who he is. He has his main executing weapon, his great knife, twirled in barbed wire. I think this is great for representing his role of judgement and punishment by means of pain, the brutal blade of a merciless executioner. Finally we have legions. This one I think represents their power very well, and also them. It has the power 
Tower's speed, it has their aggression, it has the movement lines, the blood streaks, the running pose, the blade and mask in their inclusion. It works very well all together, taking an element from lots of the different power logos, and then bringing them all together. Alright, well that's gonna do it. I do hope you enjoyed this slightly hectic video, and be sure to drop your own thoughts on these lists down below. Thanks, and goodbye.